Hello! Alrighty, welcome to a quick tutorial on how we can transfer information from one storyboard to the next using Segways. In this super quick tutorial, we're going to be learning about how we pass different data types through different view controllers. And with that, let's get started making a very simple quiz app. Now in this case, we're going to be practicing using strings and integers to pass information. And we're not going to worry about design or truly making our app look pretty just as a heads up. So over in our navigation panel, go ahead and select storyboard and we're going to add the bare essentials that we need for this project to run. Now in this view controller, I'm going to go to our object library by clicking the plus button, dragging a label that essentially says, welcome to our quiz game. And now our quiz game is not going to be too exciting. We're only going to have the option to enter your name and it's going to ask you one question. And if you get it right, it's going to say congratulations. And if you get it wrong, so sorry about your luck, but you did not win the game. So we're going to say welcome, enter your name below. And to be able to allow our user to enter their name, we're going to go back to the object library and we're going to drag a text field onto our screen. Now text field allows users to input text and we can actually grab this in our code and be able to send it to the next screen. Now with that, I'm going to add one more label that's going to ask a random question and we can just say, do you like to code? Now, I will say, there's only one correct answer. Stick around to see what it is. Now, with that, let's add two buttons, one that says yes and one that says no by once again dragging them from our object library. If you wanna check out more about the object library, there are a ton of really cool tutorials about it and I really recommend just playing around with all of the different options. But for now, we're going to go ahead and turn one button to be yes and the other button to say no. And then we can actually just copy and paste one of these buttons we can make it a little bit bigger and we're going to say, get results. And when we click on this button, we're going to want to send over our name and the score that we received to the next screen. However, that actually requires for us to have that second screen. So if I save our project and go back to the object library, you can start typing in the word view controller. And what should pop up is a regular view controller that when you hold and drag it, it should create another iPhone looking template for you to use. So in this case, what we're going to want to do next is go ahead and customize this with what we need. So in this case, let's just actually use one label and we're going to have it say, congratulations, someone's name, you earn zero points, or let's just make it blank, blank points. So when we type it, if we make it just a little bit bigger and change the lines down to zero and yeah, we should be able to see the whole phrase on our app. Once again, definitely customize this, make it pretty. However, we're just gonna go over the quick functionalities first. So from this point, there's one more step we have to take before we can truly dive into the code. And that's since we created this new view controller, we actually have to give it a code file as well. So to create a new code file, you can go up to the very top of your computer and select file, new, and select file. However, a cool fancy way that you can create the file is by clicking command N which is pretty much command new. We're going to want to select Coco Touch class, and when you click next, make sure it's a subclass of UI view controller. This is pretty much just giving the file a specific sort of framework that we're allowed to use. And in this case, let's just call it our second view controller, since we're going to be loading it onto our second screen. Once again, you can call it anything you want, just make sure it's all one word and that this is the name of your file and that you don't change it after you create it. So let's click next. And then as long as your project is selected here, you can click create. Wonderful, so now that we have our second view controller file loaded, let's go back to our main storyboard and let's go ahead and connect our outlets and our actions for these two view controllers. Before we do that, however, we actually still have to connect our second view controller to the code. So what we're going to want to do is click anywhere on your second view controller, go to the very far right hand panel, which right now we're typically on the attributes inspector. However, if you select the little identity inspector or the ID next to it, you're going to actually see that we don't have a class set in stone yet. However, we want to be very particular about what we click on before we make any changes here in the Identity Inspector. So what I recommend is clicking on this little bar that's right above your view controller to make sure that you have the entire screen selected. And in class, start typing the name of the file you created. So we created the file in the second view controller, and when you click enter, that pretty much tells Xcode and Apple, hey, this code file is going to be connected to this storyboard, and that is super helpful for in the future. Now from this point, what we're missing on our storyboard, and it should be the last and sort of confusing aspect of it, is what's called a segue, or a transition from one screen to the next. 
Now, you might have used Equates in the past, and you would usually drag it from the button you click to the screen. However, in this tutorial, and to be able to pass information and use the Segway as sort of like a, a way for information to be carried over, you're actually going to go to the top bar of your first view controller, select this yellow button, the first one, and you're going to hold control and drag to your second screen. And you should see this creates a Segway the similar way that it would if you use just a normal button. So in this case, we can just click show on our Segway, and don't worry about the design so much. You can customize the Segway, make it do the transition that you want, but what's important is that if you click on the segue and you go to your far right hand panel, select the attributes inspector, and we're going to give our segue what's called an identifier. And this pretty much will be able to kind of tell our code, hey, if we have this identifier, if it exists, then use this segue to pass our information. So let's call it, just go to next. And like that, let's save. And then we can get started with the code. So if we select our first view controller, Go ahead and go over to the assistant editor by clicking the little paragraph button and opening the assistant. Now I'm going to go ahead and close some of these other tabs just so we can see a bit better. Wonderful. So from this point, we're going to create our outlets and actions from this first screen that will give us that information and the functionality to pretty much make our app run. So first, we know that we're going to want to get whatever someone enters from our text field and use it in our code. So we're going to click on the text field, hold control, and drag it within the view controller class. And we can call it anything we want, but in this case, I'm going to just call it name text field. Now make sure the outlet is selected and it's of type UI text field. Then go ahead and click connect. Now after this point, we're going to create our button actions. And we can do this by clicking one of the buttons, holding control, and dragging it once again with inside of our class. Now make sure this is an action, and we're going to change the type to be UI button. Now, for the name of our function, we can just call it button pressed. Now, you might be thinking, all right, we got to do the exact same thing with the no button, and we're going to drag it somewhere else below that function. However, a cool part of our project is if you actually drag the button to the same button press function that we created with the other one, you can connect both of them to the same function. We're going to pretty much say if our center.title label, since we know it is a type UI button, dot text is equal to yes, then what we're going to want to do within this statement is add a point. Now it's going to get a little bit angry because something with buttons is they might not have text. And so Apple is going to be like, whoa, whoa, wait a second. If there's no text that you entered in the button, you're going to get nil. And we do not like nil because that crashes our projects. But we know since we created the button that it says yes and it says no. So if you do title label with an exclamation point, you should be able to get rid of that error. And now we don't quite need an else statement, but it's just a good practice to add one. And this would say, if it's not equal to yes, then it would be incorrect, because we all love to code, and if you don't, I promise you will if you keep practicing. But in this case, our else statement would just do nothing, because you wouldn't earn a point. Or in this case, we can actually have it maybe subtract a point, because honestly, if you don't like to code, then I'm a little concerned as to why you're here. But hopefully we can change your mind on that topic. Now with that, we're going to have to add just one more aspect. And we're going to need our, we're going to create one more action, and that is to get our actual results of entering our name and clicking on the correct answer and having it load. So we're going to drag just one more action onto our screen, and we're going to call it next screen pressed. Or you can call it anything you want. Just make sure it's an action, and don't worry so much about the type on this one, but clicking UI button is typically just a good way to let the code know what was clicked on. So I kind of recommend doing that. But now that we have all of the essentials set up here in our project with these outlets, let's go ahead and do the same with our second view controller, so then all we have to worry about is writing the code. So in this case, all we have is this one label that we want to change. So if you just click on the top of your second view controller and then highlight the label, hold control drag, and let's go ahead and call it our main label. Just make sure it's of type outlet and you guys type label, and you should be able to click connect and be set to go. Now, while we're in the second view controller screen, we're going to want to pretty much give a variable or a location for where we're going to send all of our information. Think of it as if you're driving a car on vacation and you want to be able to get to the hotel when you get to your destination. So usually you'd have that ready in advance. So we're going to give our information a place to go on this line of code for our second view controller before we worry about the first. So in this case, let's give it a variable 
of name and let's make it a type string and let's just set it equal to an empty string at first because we don't have the name and we can do the same thing for score but make it of type integer and since we don't have a score yet let's just call it zero and in our view to load function we can go ahead and grab our main label and using the dot text attribute or feature set it equal to what we want it to do and we're going to use some quick string interpolation to make this work so we want it to say congratulations and then to grab someone's name, you can use the syntax of a slash with two parentheses, and you can use the name variable we created to be inside of the two parentheses. From that point, you can say, you earned, and then using the same syntax, we can add our score, points. So, once we have all of this set up in our second view controller, we actually don't have to do a single other thing in this file. So let's go ahead and close it out, and let's go into our viewcontroller.swift file for our initial one, because this is where we're going to be doing a majority of the rest of our coding. So what I want to start with is within our button pressed, we want to create a score variable that pretty much when you select yes, which is the correct answer for the question, you're going to give the user some points. So on the top of your view controller file, as long as you're within the curly braces, we're going to create our score as a variable and let's just set it equal to zero at first. And since we already have this statement written about if it's yes or if it's no, we can just say that our score equals score plus 10. Or in this case, since score has no value, we can just set our score equal to 10 points. And since we, you know, if you don't like coding, that's okay. But we will just deduct 10 points as well. So now that we've changed our score and we have our main text label, we have one more function that we haven't included that's going to bring everything together. And that is, and we should add it below uh, our functions, if we start typing prepare and the word segue, it should be the prepare for segue function. And if you click enter on what is kind of recommended by Xcode, then it should pop up just like this. And essentially, this is thinking, once again, if you're going on vacation, usually you're going to pack some bags and you're going to, you know, load your car with some luggage. And thinking of this prepare function, it is sort of like getting ready for your trip, because the goal of the segue is going to be the car driving to your destination, but if you don't actually pack your luggage into the car before you go, you're going to have some problems. And so within this prepare function, we're going to identify what screen we're going to end up on, or pretty much where we're going to go, and we're going to tell the code to send our score variable as well as our name from our text field to the next screen. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to first check and make sure our segue identifier is what we called it in the viewcontroller screen, which in this case was the phrase go to next. Now this is just to make sure that the, proper, the segue is working all right, and truly we don't need it in this project, however, it's a really good practice to have, especially if you want the no screen to go to a completely new viewcontroller that you've created. In this case, this is just a really great practice to use. And inside of this, we're going to identify our destination. So in this same case, we're going to write it as a constant since it's not going to change. And we'll call it left destination VC or destination view controller equal. And then we can type segue dot destination. And we're going to just make sure Xcode knows what type it is, which in this case, we called our second view controller. Oops, we called it second view controller. So if you start writing out second view controller, you should be able to have it autocomplete. This is sort of saying, hey, we know that our next screen is going to be this file, and we know within the second view controller, we've created variables for our information to be stored with it. So from this point, if you start typing the name of the variable we created, destination VC, and you write dot, you can actually see that we have our name variable load here as a property. And you can set this equal to our text field, actually dot text which is pretty much saying, hey, go into the next screen and set the name equal to the name someone entered. However, you might have a question and you might have an error. And this is going to say value of optional type must be unwrapped. And this pretty much is Xcode warning us, hey, what if someone forgets to put their name? And so we're going to add one more if statement that it says if let name equals name text field dot text. And then we're going to run a line of code similar, but a little bit different. This pretty much is kind of like a guard statement where it checks to make sure that this has a value and then we can set our destination vc dot name equal to this let variable we created that we 100% know has a value. So this will only work if we actually have a name that's being entered. But you are probably still getting an error 
and this is value of optional type second view controller must be unwrapped. And that, once again, this is Xcode saying, well, what if our second view controller doesn't exist? However, since we know that it does, we can just add a question mark here, and it should work the same, and those errors should go away. So once we have this right line of code written, let's go ahead and also add our score to the next screen within the same statement, because you know, if you didn't enter your name, then we can't congratulate you. And so we're going to just add our score using the same way within this conditional statement by writing destination PC. And this time we're going to write dot score, that second variable we created, and we're going to set it equal to the score that we created up at the top of this project. Oop. If you notice, we actually also have to add our question mark into the side of code as well. We forgot about this function that says next screen pressed. And essentially, we want to go to the next screen when this button's clicked. And so one more line of code that we can write is perform segue. And we're going to have the same identifier that we used here. So you can just copy and paste it. And we're going to make the sender equal to self. Or pretty much this view controller is going to be the sender to the next view controller. But let's make sure that we run our code before we get too much further into the logistics. And let's see if it works. So once again, I'm going to just write my name down as Cammy. I'm going to say, yes, I love the code, I love it, and if you click results, let's see what happens. And as you can see, it says, congratulations Cammy, you've earned 10 points. Wonderful. Now, just to make sure it works, let's try clicking on no and see if it subtracts 10 points and let's change my name. And the way I got rid of that screen is I just dragged it down. So let's say I don't like the code, that would be such a sad world. But then if you click in results, it's going to say, congratulations Cam, you've earned negative 10 points. Which is not the best, except in terms of this project, everyone should be congratulating themselves because we all learned how to pass both strings and integers from one view controller to the next. So now I challenge you to see what you can come up with, create uh, another cool quiz game, and I would love to hear about it in the comments. So thank you so much for watching.